Welcome to this week's virtual drasha. This week we have the incredible privilege of Parshas Vayeshev. And in this Parsha we're given a window into the dynamics of Yaakov Avinu's family, 12 sons, each of them incredible tzaddikim, each of them righteous, with their own abilities, with their own characteristics, their own traits, but yet there's animosity. Specifically between Yosef and seemingly the rest of the brothers, not Benjamin, Benjamin was younger, but between Yosef and all of his older brothers. And the Torah tells us that Yosef has these dreams, these dreams which metaphorically foreshadow future greatness, material greatness, spiritual greatness. Yosef, perhaps a bit unwisely, shares the dreams with his brothers. Their reaction, also, they hated him. Not a disdain, not a dislike, not normal brotherly animosity, but a hatred. And the hatred really boils over. One day, the brothers are alone with Yosef in the field. Yosef was dispatched by his fathers to see what's happening with the brothers. And it's just the brothers and Yosef alone in the field. And the brothers conspire. Let's kill him. Let's kill him. Enough. Remember again, without getting into the reason, but they literally felt that Yosef, that Yosef at Sadiq represented an existential threat to the continuity of the Abrahamic vision. Let's kill him. Ruvain steps in, Ruvain says, no, 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 chasa shalom, why, why should we kill him? Ruvain says, lo na kenu nefesh. So Ruvain goes in and convinces them to throw him into the pit. All right, then what happens, the brothers sit down, they're eating, they see an Ishmaelite, a, a, a caravan of Ishmaelites pass by, and Yehuda comes along and says, what should we kill him? Let's just sell him. And this begins the journey, the descent of Yosef into Mitzrayim, a descent that begins with Yosef as a slave, as a Hebrew slave, the lowest tier of slaves, and ultimately sees his meteoric rise in next week's parasha to become the viceroy, the second in command of Egypt. But there's an interesting detail that the Torah shares with us. As Yosef is sitting in the pit, not knowing what his future holds, the Torah says, Vayeshvu lechem, the brothers sat down to eat bread. This is in Paraklam and Zayin Pasuch of Hay, chapter 37, verse 25. They sat down to eat. They lift their eyes and they see an Ishmaelite caravan coming from Gilad. And again, the caravan is carrying all of these interesting things. Tsuri, Velot, Balsam, Lotus, going to take their wares down to Egypt to sell. And Rashi HaKadosh is intrigued. Remember, Rashi, a reactive mafarish. Rashi always tries to understand why are certain things in the Pasuk. And Rashi says, why does the Torah need to tell me what the Ishmaelite caravan is carrying? Who cares? Who cares? In other words, the important part of the story is Yosef is sitting in a pit, caravan is coming through, Yehuda says, why should we kill him? Let's just sell him. That's how Yosef gets down to Egypt. Why do I, why do I the reader, why do I the learner need to know what the caravan is transporting? And Rashi HaKadosh says something absolutely amazing. Rashi says, Lama Pirsama Why does the Torah tell us what the caravan was carrying? Lahodia matan scharan shal tzadikim to go ahead and teach us the incredible reward that Hashem has in store for the righteous. How so? And he goes on and he says that generally, these caravans would usually carry the most foul, putrid, smelling items. But in the merit of Yosef, in the merit of Yosef, the Rashi says over here, For the merit of Yosef, this caravan was carrying sweet-smelling aromatic items. So the Torah goes out of its way to list the contents or to list the wares of this Ishmaelite caravan to tell us this was mashu mishuna, something out of the ordinary. Normally it was terrible, foul smelling, this smelled good. Why? In the Zuchus of Yosef. And asks the great Tzadik Rechaim Shmulevitz, the famed Mir Mashkiach, Zechav Tzadik V'Kadosh Levracha. What is going on over here? Rashi makes it sound like Hashem is performing this incredible miracle for Yosef. Incredible miracle. Normally it was terrible smelling. And now Yosef, Yosef, don't worry. Don't worry. Lest you're worried that your olfactory senses will be offended by the putrid smell. Good news. Good news. Everything is going to smell great. Can you imagine the scene? Yosef has been robbed of literally his clothing. Been robbed of his dignity. His own brothers stood ready to kill him. Now, instead of killing him, they sold him to an Ishmaelite caravan. Yosef is being transported to some unknown destination, probably in his mind thinking, my life is over. I'll never see my father again. I'll never see Benjamin. I'll never see my brothers. And all the time thinking, how can my brothers do this? You can imagine, he's sitting in the caravan. He's sitting in the caravan. He goes, hmm, 
Is, 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 that, is that lotus? Is, is that balsam? I, I, I detect. I detect some traces of some sweet-smelling fragrance. Who cares? Does that in any way address the court challenges of Yosef? And if the caravan would have smelled worse, if it would have smelled worse, Yosef's pain would have been amplified? In other words, Rashi makes it sound like Hashem is doing some type of miracle over here for Yosef because the caravan is carrying sweet-smelling things. Yosef has got so much on his mind. Who cares what the caravan smells like? And Rechaim Shlavet says something absolutely beautiful. He explains in Sichos Moser, that Hashem Baruch Hu performs two types of miracles. There are what we call, we've spoken about this many times in the past, there are utilitarian miracles and there are message miracles. Utilitarian miracles are miracles that HaKadosh Baruch Hu performs because he has to address a current acute need. Our ancestors stand by the banks of the Red Sea. The Egyptian army is in hot pursuit. So remember again, something's got to happen. The sea splits, so Baruch Hashem are able to go through and escape the Egyptians. We leave Mitzrayim. We're in the desert. We're in the desert. Three and a half million people. There's no food supply in the desert. Hashem brings down man. So those are utilitarian miracles that are necessary. We come into Eretz Yisrael, Yoshua, Yericho, the various battles, Amalek, Og, Sichon, all these things, miracles, dramatic miracles, necessary miracles. And then there's something called the message miracle. The message miracle is Hashem doesn't need to do it. Hashem doesn't, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu is trying to convey something to me. And the way Rechem Shulevitz puts it is sometimes the miracle that Hashem performs is in a shika. It's a kiss. It's a kiss. You know, sometimes a parent, right? A person has privileged to be a parent, and my child falls down. So they hurt their knee. I know the child is wailing and crying and upset. The parent knows, look, you know what? You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. In that moment, there's nothing I can do to take away the pain of my child. But what can I do? What does a parent almost instinctively do? I give my child a kiss. I, give my, I, I kiss them on the forehead. I kiss them on the cheek. I hold them. An ashika. You see, an ashika, a kiss, doesn't take away the pain. An ashika doesn't take away the adversity or the difficulty. But what the neshika, what the kiss does is it tells the child who's in pain, I'm here with you. I'm here with you. I know you're going to wince from the pain a little bit longer. And then probably when we put the alcohol on to go ahead and clean the wound and put the bandage on, it's going to hurt a little bit more. And then when you bend your knee still, it's going to hurt a little bit more. After that. But I'm kissing you. I just want you to know I'm here. We're going to, we're going to get through this together. I'm here with you. And Rechaim Shulavis says so beautifully that sometimes the Kaddish Baruch Hu performs a miracle that doesn't solve a problem doesn't address the core issue. It doesn't fix that which is broken. It doesn't ameliorate some type of difficulty. But the kiss reminds the person who is struggling and suffering, I am here right by you, says Rechaim Shmulevitz. That's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu was doing for Yosef. You see, for Yosef, the hardest thing in this moment was not only all the things my brother did to me, but I'm alone. My father's gone. You know, think about it from Yosef's perspective. His mother had passed away. He was already a child without a mother. He was privileged to have a father who loved him, who doted over him. Now I don't have my father. Ki avi vi'imi azavuni. I have no one. My brothers, they turn their back on me. And if you're Yosef, you're probably thinking to yourself, you know what? It kind of feels like Hashem is absent also. It kind of feels like the Ribbono Shal Olam has left the building. And I, I am in this life, I am in this predicament all by myself. And in that very moment, what does HaKadosh Baruch Hu do? He gives Yosef a kiss. The kiss was in the form of the aromatic spices that were in the caravan. Yosef knew enough to know this is not the norm. Usually this, these things smell terrible. Very, these caravans must have passed by Yosef's home, Yaakov's home, all the time. And I'm sure you could smell it from a mile away. And suddenly the first caravan that Yosef's ever encountered in his life, the one that he's sold to, has aromatic spices. Did the aromatic spices fix the problem? Did the aromatic spices somehow put together the family that was so broken? Did the aromatic spices return Yaakov to Yo Yosef to Yaakov? No, no. You know what the aromatic spices did do? With the aromatic, with the sweet scent, with the change, with the deviation, Yosef and Sadik felt a kiss from Hashem. I now know that I'm not in this alone. I now know 
that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is by my side. And even though just a moment ago, I thought so forsaken, I felt so forsaken, so alone, so abandoned. The kiss, the kiss of Hashem, in the form of the sweet-smelling aromatic spices, is enough to give me the strength to be strong. Is enough to tell me I am not in this alone. The Ribono Shel Olam has my back. And every single step that I take, I know that my God is going to take that step along with me. That's as Rechaim Shmulevitz was the miracle of the aromatic spices of the Ishmaelite caravan. It didn't fix a problem. It didn't fix anyone's It didn't address a need. But it was a kiss. It was an ashika that made a poor, broken, lonely Yosef feel that his God, his true father, was with him every step of the way. And Rechaim Shmulevitz says so beautifully that the truth is this is the message of Hanukkah as well. Because if we look at the Hanukkah story, we know that again, we know the miracle, the little cruise of oil, the little jug of oil that remained lit for eight days. Incredible. Incredible. Again, you could look at the miracle, you could say, so what? So what? I mean, again, and if, and if it didn't burn for eight days, what? what? What would have happened? You know, again, and if remember, again, even without getting into all the technicalities of, of halacha, that they could have technically used ritually impure oil as well, but leaving all of that aside, leaving all of that aside, why the big deal about the miracle? Rechaim Shlavitz again says, do you know what the miracle of the Pach Shaman, the miracle of the little jug of oil, you're right, it didn't remedy a need. It wasn't a utilitarian miracle. It was a kiss. It was a kiss. It was an ashika from Hashem to tired, worn out Kohanim who took up arms to defend our Torah to defend our lifestyle, to defend our religion, to defend our beliefs, and who were so exhausted, exhausted from the losses that they had suffered, exhausted from the setbacks that they had experienced, exhausted from the rampant waves of assimilation, exhausted from everything. And it was the kiss to Hashem that says, my children, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. You wage the good fight. You put up the war. You won. You won. And I know that the road ahead is difficult. And the road ahead is still going to be paved with so much adversity, so much difficulty. But I'm kissing you. I just want you to know that I'm here. We'll rebuild together. We'll rejuvenate together. We'll experience the Renaissance together. We'll put back the pieces together. I'm here along with you. The miracle of the cruise of oil, the Pach Shemen, was in a shika, was a kiss. An incredible confluence of kisses. Yosef HaTadik receives his kiss in the darkness of a foreign caravan in the form of aromatic spices that made him know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu was there with him. The Maccabi and the Chashmonim received their kiss from Hashem. Cloudy Yisrael received their kiss from Hashem in the form ultimately of a little jug of oil that remained lit for eight days. Uh, what an important lesson for us. Because we all go through moments of adversity and we all go through moments of difficulty, whether it's big challenge or little challenge, you know, we all know when it's your challenge, it's a big challenge. You know, it's easy to look at other people's challenges. Oh, that, that's not such a big challenge. You know, in, in the grand scheme of challenges, that's not a big one. That may be object objectively true. But when you're suffering, when you're undergoing adversity, your challenge is often the biggest challenge in the world. And it's important for us to live life with our eyes open. And to recognize that so many times, even in the midst of adversity and challenge, the kisses are all over. Hashem gives me a kiss here. Hashem gives me a kiss there. And those kisses are so powerful. You know, all of us could remember from our childhood those kisses. I remember that time that I fell down, <laughs> more than once fell down. And my mother, my father was there. Just the kiss. The kiss didn't take away the pain. But the kiss made sure that I felt that I wasn't alone. The kiss reminded me, even though I didn't understand that as a child, as an adult I could process it, the kiss reminded me, there might be pain ahead. My parent is always here. My mother's here. My father's here. And whatever I have to go through, I'm not going to go through it alone. And that's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu conveys to us so often in life. But you have to be aware enough. You have to have your eyes open enough. You have to open your neshama enough to feel the kisses. The kisses are all around us. And the truth is, the more intense and overwhelming the suffering, adversity, challenges, and difficulties, the more voluminous the kisses are. The more You get more kisses when you have more struggles. Just so often we're overwhelmed by the enormity of our circumstances. 
that we don't even see or we don't smell the sweet smelling spices. We don't see the little bit of oil that burns for longer. The kisses are there. We just have to keep our neshamas open to be able to see them. Yosef's kiss sustained him through the darkness of the years ahead. The Chashmonoim's kiss of the Pach Shaman sustained them and sustained us to this very day. It would be wonderful to say we'll never have adversity. It would be wonderful to say there'll never be challenges, but we know that that's not true. But at least if there are challenges, we thank the Ribbon Shal Olam for each and every one of his kisses. Maybe Zochem Yerat Hashem to see those kisses, but more importantly, to feel those kisses. And may those divine kisses give us the strength we need to navigate all of life's challenges. Wishing everyone a good and Erev Shabbos, a beautiful Shabbos Kodesh, and a Lichtige Chanukah.